Hi, um, right, I've set the spreadsheets up here pretty much as you set it up in your video. Um, so I've got day, actual balance, the balance, the deduction, and the column featuring some dates there as well. So I'll just show you the um, the solution, and then I'll show you how, uh, how we got there. So what we have, obviously, is your deductions increasing by 80 cents per day. Um, for the week and then on the day following the end of the week we add on an, an additional 40 cents. So if I just copy these deductions down here in column D which I've uh, created, we'll copy it down uh, to the seventh day okay and as you can see it's, it's accumulated to five dollars sixty so that's 80 cents per day and if I then copy it down one more row which takes us to the eighth day that goes to six dollars eighty which is what you want really so that's the eighty plus the forty um, over here the, these two columns are pretty straightforward really in terms of calculation um, the balance I've noticed is accumulating by one dollar seventy five or at least it, it was in your example so I've simply set this uh, formula there to take the previous cell add one dollar seventy five if I just copy that down that operates in isolation really so that's not affected by the by the deduction column. The actual balance simply um, takes the value in the balance column and takes away the deduction. Pretty straightforward. And again if I just copy that down to the eighth day we get $13.20 as the actual balance against $20 for the balance. Um, so you, that's all working with the additional 40 cents on the, uh, the eighth day. Now for the second week um, you don't want to 8 plus 8 because that will take you to day 16. You actually want the day following the end of the second week should be day 15. So again what I'm going to do here is simply copy the deduction cell down to day 15 which is this one here. Okay, uh, We get again on day 15 $12.80 as opposed to the 80 cent increase for the previous six days. So that seems to be working as you want it I think. And again, if I just take these two formulas, copy those two, they're perfectly, uh, perfectly straightforward, those two. Um, now, the secret to the deduction is simply that we have a hidden column. And if I just select the column headers DNF, right click and unhide, you'll see it reveals the, uh, the hidden column, which is where the, uh, the trick is. So in this column, most of those cells con contain a zero value apart from the critical bit where you need to add the 40 cents. And this is all there is to it really, that um, the, the formula in the deduction column looks at this hidden column E all the time and see if there's a value there or not. If there isn't then obviously it just adds increments by 80 cents. If there is it increments by 80 plus the 40. Um, and that in a nutshell is it. So if I click in that $6.80 cell there and have a look at the formula bar you see that's all it is it's uh, D9 which is the previous cell plus 80 cents plus whatever value is in E10 which in this case is the 40 cents okay now obviously you don't want to um, have the hassle of typing zeros and 40 cents all the way down your column um, but you don't have to do that because we can just sort of do a, a quick copy now what I need to do here is select this this first bit by the way you need to do that manually because it's an eight day period thereafter we're covering seven day period so I can select the one two three four five six seven day period there and what I want to do is copy that down and what I want to do there is put my little mouse pointer over the bottom right to get the black cross hold down the control key and when I do that if you have a, a look next to the black cross you see a little plus sign appears so make sure you've got the plus sign by holding down the control key and copy down. You see it goes 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 40 on the seventh day. So I'm going to carry on copying down. We'll go into the auto scroll on Excel in a minute, so it might go into warp speed, but anyway. So as you can see, I'm copying down 0, 0, and 40, and so on. So if I just go down to the next 40, there we go. And that actually takes to row. 38 or day 36 in this case. Okay, so you just continue down as far as you want doing that really. So that 
column there, that column E, we don't want to have on view. Uh, you can have it on view if you want, but it's, it's. I think it's a good idea to hide it, and it sort of keeps it secret how you're actually adding the uh, the 40 cents on. And then we can now go and do the next week. So if I take that $12.80 value and copy it down to the uh, the next week, so we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There we go. That's working. So 80 cent increases up to uh, day 21, which is the end of the third week, and the day after we add on $1.20. And again, just copy those other two down there. Pretty straightforward. So that, I think, solves the problem. It's not perhaps the most elegant solution. I think there are other ways of doing it, maybe involving macros and maybe even Visual Basic if you want to get into all that, but um, this solution works. I think it's perfectly fine and it does the job. Um, hopefully you'll find that okay. The other problem that you had, um, the conditional formatting, again relatively straightforward to sort that one out. What I'm going to do here is select all the values um, in the table starting at A3, which is day one. Okay, and I'm going to select all the cells and we'll go up to March 26, doesn't really matter. But anyway, okay, so that's highlighted all those. I'm going to go to the format menu, choose conditional formatting. Just bring that down a little bit there, you can see what we're doing. Uh, now, on the condition, the first part of the condition, I'm going to select formula is, okay. Um, that 0 0.4, by the way, that's from a previous conditional format that I did. You can ignore that. So I'm going to delete that out. Now, what I'm going to do here is type equals, click on the first date, 26th of February. So it puts $G$3 in, which means it's an absolute cell reference. I'm going to do a slight edit on that formula to delete the dollar sign before the 3. So we've now got equals $G$3. What that basically is doing is locking the conditional format on column G, but it allows the row number to update as the, as the conditional format copies down the table. Okay, and then we type equals again, and what we're interested in is knowing if it's today or not. So we simply type equals today. And then we do an open and close parentheses. Uh, that's the calculation or the formula. Click on the format button, and uh, we're going to choose a uh, garish green colour for the format. Click OK. Click OK on the conditional format, and you'll see straight away that the 17th of March is now highlighted. And what will happen is on the 18th of March, that will be highlighted, and so on and so forth. So that is how you conditional format for an entire row. If you want to have the entire row, by the way, what you do is you actually click on the, the row number, I like that, and you can do the same trick. But anyway, I've just done it so it formats across the uh, the row there. The other thing I'll just finally show you is how to, uh, if you haven't already done it, um, as I scroll down, you'll see my column headings stay locked. And that's simply a, a case of doing what they call freezing panes. What you do is you put your uh, cursor or select the cell where you want the cells to be locked, or below where you want the cells to be locked. Click on Window, and that says unfreeze panes now because I've already done it, but if I click that now, go back to Window, choose Freeze Panes, what that means then is I can scroll down and my column headings stay in the same view. And that, hopefully, solves your problems. So thank you for the question, and cheerio for now.